Friday afternoon, folks. Ted Ralston and our fantastic uh, staff and crew on uh, our show, Where the Drone Leads, at the Think Tech Studios downtown Honolulu today. Uh, welcoming on board uh, Dr. Song Choi, hey, Ted. Savoy, Assistant Dean in sounds Department good. of Engineering. Sounds good. And uh, sounds good. Is it a different title no, no. these days? No. That's <laughs> pretty close. Okay. Yeah. No, no different title. <laughs> okay. All right. Same, same song, Choi. Same title. Same, same school. <laughs> same school. All right. So that's pretty cool uh, song. So anyway. Uh, You've been on this show half a dozen times. We've talked about yeah. technology and education and STEM and drones and all those things. And we have one of your protégés online uh, standing by in Las Vegas, Great. Uh, Chuck Devaney. Hey, Chuck. There he is. Hey, guys. Now, you could no, have done a better Kevin, job on the cosmetics, I suspect, but, uh, <laughs> but that's what we get. <laughs> hey, Chuck. <laughs> How are you? In fact, this is a really auspicious week, if I can suggest, because okay. uh, it was at the Paycom s and conference about five years ago where mm -hmm. I first met you. Yeah. And uh, you had the UH display there. UH had a big UAV display with mm -hmm. the Dave Hummer and some other guys mm -hmm. with some Boeing-sponsored products. Mm -hmm. And uh, I met Chuck uh, shortly after that mm -hmm. uh, through the uh, work he was doing looking for drones for work in, um, in coastal geology and such. Yep. And then that led us to tie all together, and that led well, to... We had a panel session. We had a panel session, right? exactly. We did. Right. And then uh, one thing led to the other, and uh, we're back here again, yep. all three of us, yep. at the same place this started uh, five years later. Yeah, that was about and, five uh, years ago already. Wow. We yeah. should uh, put a, a good uh, shout-out to Jay Fidel, who really of is an energetic uh, guy here making a lot of this happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jay, if you're out there, join us <laughs> on the panel. Maybe he'll walk in. <laughs> yeah, maybe he owns a place, you ought to probably walk in. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so Chuck, uh, uh, you, uh, have, uh, you're you kind of working your way back to Hawaii slowly but surely here. Starting out yep. in Hawaii, moving to D.C., again. part way back, standing in the Vegas for a while until certain things happen. And then he'll be uh, moving out, uh, moving along in other directions, I suspect. But uh, uh, Chuck, what's it, what's it like in, in terms of what you've been able to see for yourself at this point in time? And, the world of UAVs uh, as you see it in Vegas? Um, well, uh, I see a lot of opportunity here in, mm. for a lot of different reasons. Um, there's a lot of activity here. We have the, uh, the, the, uh, US, uh, the U.S. test site that, that's happening here, and I've reached out to those folks. Um, we see a lot of movement in the FPV world. We see a lot of movement in the, uh, the hobbyist community, and we also see a lot of uh, movement in the, the cinematography world. Um, I w it also, you know, just north of here at the Air Force Base, they have a lot of their, uh, uh, you know, Department of Defense type UAS as well. So um, I am still kind of in the process of uh, reaching out and, you know, form forming those relationships with those people between here and Reno as well. That's great. And so he, Chuck's only been on the ground two weeks in Las Vegas, and he's already got a complete inventory and a Very portfolio good. going on uh, Very good. Uh, what's out there. But what's interesting is what Chuck mentioned. Uh, video and, and film and such, uh, I mean, Las Vegas is entertainment. And you, the fact that UAS is a participant or could be a big participant in the entertainment business, either in creating films or in uh, creating light shows and all this sort of thing, it's, it's a really interesting mm -hmm. level of uh, a difference in, in entertainment. And um, Chuck, uh, Las Vegas is where that's all happening. So maybe it is... Well, some of it, yeah, definitely, Ted. So I'm, I'm working with a new company now called Quadrocopter. Um, they've uh, done very, very well in the cinematography world, and we are going to be moving into the geospatial realm and, and data realm, which is um, going to be more of my responsibility. But uh, they've, uh, they've, they also do retail for DJI products and FreeFly products and Mobi products. Um, if you're a, uh, a cinematographer buff or a cinematography type that is uh, using UAS, you're probably definitely going to know of these guys. So... Um, I gotta, I gotta give, I gotta plug them in because they're giving me a home. So, <laughs> oh, that's all right, <laughs> Dave. Absolutely, anybody on this show? Uh, of course, we're, we're, we're totally open to uh, promotion of anything. That's great. Yeah. But don't get too far stuck in these things. We have a, I haven't even told you about it yet, but we have a, a proposal we're putting in pretty soon at UH in about three weeks, and I think we need you on the team, Chuck, uh, even though you're remote. So mm -hmm. I'll tell you about that offline here. Okay, is that the EBSCOR thing? I would be the escort thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Let me know how uh, how we can support that. Yep. Okay. We'll Sounds do that. Good. Well, we need an integration guy. We need to take guy take care of um, uh, sensor integration, uh, payload integration, uh, flight systems, and uh, not so much at the beginning of the proposal, but more at the end when we introduce some different uh, flight management and guidance techniques. So we're probably going to use an instant eye as a mm -hmm. framework. We can get the uh, 
academic version that has the ability to put in our own software uh, and still retain the, the basic software as a, as a failure case. So that's what we're talking about. And this is a kind of a, a neat opportunity. So, uh, Absolutely. And actually, it would be good, really great having Chuck as part of that because you will have the insight and the, and the perceptions from your new environment, which will inform us uh, through Chuck's eyes mm -hmm. on how that's all working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I was out at uh, Best Buy today because I had to look for something, and I was actually surprised that they had at least uh, a dozen <laughs> quadcopters there that was for sale from anywhere from a range of like $1,000 to as low as like, you know, $100 or so. And I also remember when I was uh, all over Asia at the international duty-free shops, they had quadcopters everywhere. So, you know, definitely this has become a normal life, and you can grab it anywhere you want. You know, that's really interesting. And then... Uh, because that brings to mind the issue of Moore's Law mm -hmm. and the fact that these things, which were, you know, 20,000 bucks five years mm -hmm. ago, are now buck fifty at the mm -hmm. counter. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they're dropping in price, increasing capability, and actually increasing in reliability mm -hmm. as well as you move forward here. But it also brings up the issue of the, this proliferation mm -hmm. and the fact that we're not educating people fast enough, I don't think, in... Uh, oh, no, of course, that's a big issue because, uh, you know, uh, it, as with any technology, uh, economics is going to drive how fast and quickly it grows. If, if the price of one of these things costs less, you're going to have more people getting involved with playing with them and using them for uh, whatever need that they have. Uh, you know, and here with the photography and all the uh, tourism, it's obviously a plus that we have quadcopters and they can take some very unique uh, pictures when they're here. So what, that, that brings up another point. Back to the issue of what we're going to do with Chuck. We'll give Chuck nine months or a year to be mm -hmm. in Vegas, and then we've <laughs> got to harvest him and get him back here. And because that, that whole issue of the entertainment industry and the tourism, exactly as you mentioned, what is Hawaii all about? It's about tourism. About tourism. Absolutely mm -hmm. right. And uh, we don't want to get behind that power curve. Mm -hmm. We want to be out in front of that one of course. in terms of well thought through respectful mm -hmm. programs so we don't uh, violate uh, property rights and this mm -hmm. sort of thing or not have permits and this sort right. of thing but injecting this as an interactive aspect in tourism we got to we got to get we got to get our arms around that oh no of course i mean uh, you know any any technology is like a new flower that comes up right and the stem is the engineering and we're always the implementing and applying the knowledge is learned in the sciences and mathematics um, we obviously have to be creative about what we do, right? And uh, the more creative we are, the better we're going to be able to harness and utilize these technologies of the flower. And whether it be a yellow flower today or a red flower tomorrow, as long as, like you said, we're ahead of the curve and we are making those decisions instead of having them made for us because the technology is out driving us, I think we're okay. You know, and that brings up, sorry, uh, another thing that, that uh, we, too many things coming up here at once, we can't track the conversations. What you can do is read the teleprompter and read the script. That's the <laughs> way to take that. care of the problem. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, at the university, uh, we deal with engineering a lot. We deal with uh, coastal geology. Mm -hmm. We deal with um, uh, folks in geography department and such. But we haven't, I don't think we've reached out to the, to the hotel industry people at, at, at UH. And there is some aspect of that, uh, and, or the, and the business community in yeah. UH. Obviously, the business school and the yeah. travel industry management schools yeah. need to get involved sometime because uh, a lot of these technologies are going to be in the forefront of what they do, and maybe these drones will be a way of optimizing some of their security aspects or safety aspects, and that will just lead to a better uh, experience when somebody's here. You know, we can't, we, we don't have control of the weather, but we can obviously control all the other stuff that you know, and that, and that leads to the thought that uh, the tourists who come here are going to, they've been other places as well, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and other places aren't as uh, regulated perhaps in the mm -hmm. domain of drones as we might be. So they might be expecting, tourists might be expecting a higher level and a really professional level of a corporation injection inoculation of drones into our larger business scope, including tourism. So we got to get, who can we talk to at, at, at UH to uh, open that door and get them on the show here? Oh, well, I mean, we, we can always bring the deans of uh, travel industry management as well as uh, dean of business here. Okay. And I'm sure they would have their perspectives as to how the economy is driving uh, more and more of these technologies into their industry sectors. Let's do that. And then we, have, we can feed that back to Chuck. Well, I, I think uh, since Chuck is in Las Vegas, which is the city of hotels and <laughs> entertainment, 
you guys, you might have a you know a better perspective and see how the hotels there and the large resorts there have incorporated some of this technology. Well, the problem here, Dean Choi, is 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 the airspace problem. Just you know, to to the south of of the Strip is is the airport. So we're completely engulfed with Class B from you know twelve thousand to the surface. Mm -hmm. So. I, I can't imagine that there's probably a whole much going on or a whole bunch going on in the drone world uh, here. Um, I, I can imagine it could probably be used if, if the airspace wasn't quite a problem for, for some ISR, for safety, um, some of the ambulance, uh, you know, first responder uh, um, applications that, uh, that might exist. But you've, you've also got a lot of people on the ground. You've got a lot of turbulent winds. You've got a lot of people that have been drinking a lot and parking <laughs> a lot and up all night. And again, we're, we're pretty much submersed in Class B. So if you were to use a DGI product, you would never even be able to arm it in Las Vegas. Right. So you'd have to use something else. Mm -hmm. So I haven't seen a lot of it here yet. Plus, there's a lot of tourist helicopters here, a lot of R-22s, a lot of R-44s stuff like that. So I don't imagine that those guys are going to probably want to share too much of the airspace with guys, um, you know, peddling their offerings using UAS. But you know, Waikiki might be a different animal altogether. You've got safety concerns. You've got people in the water. You can, you can drop a life preserver to them. Yeah. You can have a, 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 a surveillance, uh, you know, ISR component. Um, you name it, and then of course the, the 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 advertising and marketing as well. You know, to, to, to take that pretty picture for the brochure, and you don't have quite the airspace concerns because I, I think we're still Class G right in that area, but you got to stay 200 feet from everybody. You know, and uh, the other side of the tourism aspect uh, beyond the just the, um, the the physical plant protection and such you're speaking of, Chuck, is the actual tourist entertainment mm -hmm. aspect, mm -hmm. the involvement, mm -hmm. the. Uh, participatory. So as you speak, uh, Las Vegas itself is within the five of, uh, of uh, McCarran Airport, but certainly uh, outside of that, there is uh, plenty of Class G. And, uh, Absolutely. Plenty so, of it. Plenty of it. There's a lot of MOAs you got to be aware of as well. Okay. Um, Which are active only when they're active, but... Active when they're active, but you got to pay attention to that and, you know, make sure you, you, you know, you dot your I's and cross your T's when you're, when you're dealing with that. Okay. But um, there is, there's, uh, I've actually already joined the, joined the Las Vegas Soaring Club. So I've been out there and I've uh, met those guys and, and seen a lot of tal talented pilots out there as well. There's a lot of beautiful countryside that can be, you know, filmed and, and uh, I don't know what, whatever you do with, with, with the, with that, uh, an advertisement for, you know, Red Rock Canyon, so on and so forth. But yeah, once you get outside of the... What we're going to do is uh, take our first break here and then come right back and talk about how we're going to take this tourism thing one step further Sounds with the good. agreement you and I made to get the uh, business and uh, hotel industry mm -hmm. deans together and talk about this. No, of course. After I think that's break. a good idea. Aloha, everybody. My name is Mark Shklov. I'd like you to join me for my program, Law Across the Sea, on thinktechhawaii.com. Aloha. Aloha, my name is Justine Spiritu. This is my co-host Matthew Johnson. Every Thursday at 4 p.m. on ThinkTech, we host the Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. We like to bring in folks from the whole realm of the local food supply and agriculture, anyone working on these issues, any organization or individual that has plans or projects. What kind of people have we had on? Uh, so we've had farmers, we've had chefs, we've had people from government, uh, larger institutions, everyone who's working to help make Hawaii's local food system that much better. So you can see us every Thursday and join the conversation on Twitter, and we hope to see you there. Ted Rawson and our team here on the Think Tech studio table, the Where the Drone Lead show, Dr. Song Choi. How you doing, Ted? Uh, last time we talked to you, which is 15 minutes ago, you were <laughs> Assistant Dean of Engineering at UH. I'll, I'll stay that way. Still there, okay. <laughs> that's good. Have, you, have you checked in, the, have you called up the, the, you know, the, uh, the telephone information to see if that's still true? I, I, I'll go check. Right. Okay. <laughs> we have, 
Uh, Chuck Devaney, a uh, product of UH, is standing by in Las Vegas. We're just talking really excited stuff about uh, drones entering our economic streams here, mm -hmm. which happen to be entertainment in both Las Vegas course, and in tourism course, and entertainment in Hawaii. So, you know, one idea that did come up was uh, replacing fireworks yeah, with absolutely. a swarm of drones that could do different type of patterns. And I thought that was a really interesting idea, almost similar to the water light shows at uh, Las Vegas in front of uh, Bellagio. It sounds like an engineering challenge. To <laughs> I me, think Tom. it is. And it's uh, an engineering controls challenge. There we right? go. It's a, it, absolutely, it's that. And uh, in, in our case, it would have a weather tolerance aspect. That's right. And it would have... Mm -hmm. um, uh, an orientation so that the 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 imagery can or the, the whatever the graphics are can be uh, right, projected right, at the ground. Right. What are, and, and that also leads to search and rescue in some way oh, at, at course, some point in of time. Course. How do we, so? Once again, we have a need to get these uh, these other deans together and go work this thing out. Of course, you know you know talking about this entertainment aspect, it it really does lead to like what you said, a search and rescue type stuff because. Uh, swarming uh, control and swarming of uh, vehicles is obviously something we need to look at because you look at the animals, the way they migrate, uh, the insects, the way they travel, and they look for things. It's all in some sort of a swarming pattern. And if we can have the right control aspects in having them feed back to one another or to a, uh, let's say, a mother or a king drone, then you have all the data that you need to do whatever you want. And you know what? What do we, what do we pay for those animals? The buck twenty nine each, right? I mean, <laughs> they, they, they come with all that capability. That's right. And the sensors, mm -hmm. and their fault tolerance built in, mm -hmm. and uh, all, a reasonably long life cycle, mm -hmm. and fairly easy maintenance. Feed them some hay, and they do their That's thing, it. right? I mean, our fish food. You know, the only shortcoming we have with any of these technological developments is what we run into, and then that has to do with power, right? So, so whoever can come up with the endless power source is going to be like the cancer for, uh, the treatment for cancer, right? So it's, it's the holy grail, and we're always looking for that. And, you know, maybe with Hawaii being one of the leaders in renewable energies and how we're trying to separate ourselves from much of the carbon-based fuels, Maybe we're on the right track. How about a reduction in carbon base for entertainment and tourism? There you go. <laughs> and, and a higher value to uh, entertainment in the process. There you go. Okay. In fact, Chuck in, in Vegas could type in the parameters of the show and run the entertainment show that, from that's Las Vegas. Right. And we could run the Las Vegas entertainment of from course. here. Of that, course. That would be... Uh, Chuck, interesting are you writing this you. stuff all down? This is your assignment yeah, sure. list. all down, and it all makes perfect sense to me. Of course, remote control is the way to go, right? <laughs> yeah, remote control, yeah, do everything from your own home. That's right. And, yep. and, and the, the notion of swarming and who's in charge of the swarm and how decisions are made, that is a fascinating discussion that maybe some of our botany people would have some knowledge of. I, mean, I, I agree, I agree. That would be, you know, if you think about it, the biggest form of flattery is emulation, right? So when we try to emulate how robots are getting closer and closer to human anatomy and human biology, human motions. And we're also looking at how robots can become closer to animal motions. Th there has to be something said. That there, there must be some sort of perfection in that biological happening mm -hmm. that we're constantly trying to emulate these. And maybe swarming is one of those things where uh, birds and insects do it instinctively, and we just have to figure out how that's done and try to see if we can get our programmers to work that out. So there's a state change there of some kind that we have mm -hmm. to we have to get into that different state. I don't That's know right. what that is a That's transformation. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's not this an axis transformation. Mm -hmm. It's not a common filter. It's something mm -hmm. like gigantically bigger than that. It, it, it's 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 a it's it's almost a, uh, a a complete modification of how things are done. I think uh, we're used to a base of rules, and then when I think when you hit a certain state, we instinctively go into another set of rules and. Yeah, uh, some of that we don't really know how it's done because I think we do it instinctively, and we're trying to figure out how that, those connections take place. And the whole concept of artificial intelligence uh, rises from that, and maybe we'll come up with some solutions. In, in now, the this is really getting where we have to get to. How do we? Because <laughs> this defines the future of Hawaii's intellectual uh, domain, mm -hmm. this, which then sets salaries, mm -hmm. and that sets how much the government can tax us. Mm -hmm. So the, the the carrying cost for Hawaii gets better if we can start getting some of this functionality being extracted and defined and developed here. Of course, of course. I mean, uh, uh, you know, I, I, with Chuck over at uh, Las Vegas, I think uh, one of the things that we need to take a look at is we see a lot of these uh, drones or uh, unmanned aerial vehicles, 
and they're pretty much remote control. Maybe we need to figure out a way to have a little slap-on or modification add-on that makes it autonomous. And that would be a really interesting way to see how close we are to uh, how things can operate on its own. I mean, you know, we always talk about uh, auto drive cars and stuff like that. And we have Teslas and all the, the Google cars and all that. And we keep thinking it's far away. But if you look at the technology that we have, if we create the right structure, all those vehicles can be running on their own. It's the humans that are unpredictable because we go out there and we have a tendency of dodging left and we should always be dodging right. And that leads back to the issue of what is our basic GNP of Hawaii, mm -hmm. and uh, we don't have resources. Uh, we have sunshine. Mm. Uh, that's our resource, and 365 days a year of it. We have warm water. Uh, Boeing, for example, started in Seattle because there was mm -hmm. a high-end uh, lumber company up there that's called right. Boeing that made, that's and I right. had Sitka spruce, and that's what airplanes used mm -hmm. to be made of. So that's how Boeing started, where mm -hmm. the resource was. Douglas started in Southern California, where the resource was sunshine. You could work on airplanes outside all year long. Mm -hmm. uh, so what's, how, do we, how do we take this this really interesting issue of, of the compelling need to generate a viable tourist industry that isn't just get in a bus and go take a tour, uh, but is something higher than that and is enhanced or is somehow made possible by the, or is, is, is increased in capability somehow by, by drones mm -hmm. and, and, and in, in participative as well as expressive. Uh, that would lead to an incredible state change in mathematics and, comp and, and computation and uh, we get away from these one-on-one -on -one to one-on-many right. engagements. That's right. And uh, uh, I, I can't even think what that discipline is called that does that. Uh, well, you know, like, like all disciplines now, um, you know, we've been calling some of the, well, and I'll, I'll talk about engineering. We have mechanical engineering, civil engineering, electrical engineering. Uh, I, mean, I mean, these these disciplines have been around for decades, centuries, you know, we got to think about maybe the next 50 years from now, those electrical yeah. engineers will not be electrical engineers. They're not, those uh, mechanical engineers will not be quite mechanical engineers. They're going to be something else. So I think we need to uh, enhance, embrace those uh, changes and see where we're going to be leading. Uh, you know, when I was working a lot more with underwater vehicles, uh, part of the entertainment thing we were looking at was going into regions that normally you would not be able to go with these vehicles, right? And maybe it's the same thing with these aerial vehicles. We're going to go to these vast oceans where we normally can't get to, but we now have access to visualizing uh, some of the beauty that's out there. And who knows? Uh, maybe a new sport can be brought together or an entertainment factor of some sort. So we got to get with our, once again, with our corresponding <laughs> beans and, and, and see if they go along with us or are they trapped? So, uh, so I think we need to uh, contact the travel industry management, the business yep. school. We might also have to start looking into some uh, contacts in other states like California. Like Las Vegas. Las Vegas or California where entertainment industry is a little bit more uh, developed where maybe we can uh, tap on USC and say, hey, let's access your entertainment departments and see what we can do in terms of creating new entertainment. But these are in the worlds of uh, not quite artificial intelligence, but hybrid intelligence and this sort of thing, and hybrid reality mm -hmm. and augmented reality. Those mm -hmm. are the kind of terms we're speaking well, of. Well, yeah, I mean, think about what virtual reality has done and computer graphics has done to the film industry. Uh, even if we look back five years ago, the computer graphics in films look like computer graphics. <laughs> yeah, you right. look at computer graphics now yeah. and you look at some of these video games, I can't tell if those are uh, computer graphics or real people. They, they look the same until you sit there and you go, I don't think you could move like that. <laughs> That's interesting because uh, 35 years ago there was an advertisement on television for a particular brand of audio tape and it mm -hmm. said, can you tell the difference? Oh, yeah, yeah. Remember that one? That's that right. was audio, right? That was limited. Now we have the same thing in video. You can't tell you, reality. You cannot from, tell. Right. I mean, you look at some of the TVs, these ultra high definition TVs, uh, and you go, wow, that's clearer than looking out the window. So, so these changes that we see technologically, uh, the engineering implementation of all our science and math and arts and the creativity that we generate, 
it's going beyond, I think, some of what our imagination was. And now we're just we're trying to play catch up as to see where we can go. We have to and get, this is one of them. We have to play catch up with our imagination and mm -hmm. find that new state no, that's and exactly then work our way is. into it. That's what yeah. exactly what it is. And that's the setup for a meeting I was just uh, told about and on, on Wednesday, uh, Bert uh, Lum was telling mm -hmm. me about unconference this year. Mm -hmm. And I have to run a, a session at the unconference okay. on that very issue, and I'm inviting you. Okay. It's on a Saturday. Sure. I think it's on April 1st or something like that. That's but, fine. Uh, you sure? April 1st? Yeah, <laughs> how about that? I, you know, what, what a logical place to put it, right? Yeah. yeah. And I was going to ask John Rand and uh, oh, Peter Quigley to, good. if we can, they're probably not even watching, but we'll uh, try to get them on uh, that as well. I just saw them a couple days ago. Because too. we've got to figure out what, how this all fits into the Hawaii economy. And, oh, of course, uh, of course. And we have to generate uh, uh, the educational system that gets the workforce development, and then we also have to get the, the production of software and such. We're not going to produce hardware here. We know that. Maybe nano hardware or something, yeah. but we're not going to be producing conventional hardware here. Well, I mean, we have to always remember, you know, we're, we're always told, let's develop workforce. But yeah. if we develop workforce, we Like Chuck, have we developed him, and guess what he did? That's he right. He skipped off to D.C. two years ago, and now he's Well, that's because, that's because the other part of what I wanted to say. We have to develop the work along with the workforce. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. You, you can't yeah. have one with the other. So, you know, if you don't if you don't want people to leave, you have to have that work here, that expectation that for the workforce that you've developed and you know, wh whether it's through entertainment or uh, tourism, uh, we'll, we have to do something. And what's interesting is this ba basic technology here which Chuck had a lot to do with introducing me mm -hmm. to by the way has uh, is is one of those vectors into that new change, into that new that, that new world, that new view. Yeah, I mean, I mean, people should realize that uh, one of the biggest industry here is the military. And you know, next week we have Pacific Command, yep. Science and Technology. Where we started this show, uh -huh. all right? And everybody, whoever has a time, should drop by and take a look and see what type of technology is being brought here, and see how something like a drone, which long time ago, may have been thought of it as a toy, can fit into actual workspace. Very right. interesting question. This is, won't take very long, but we're talking right now about using this thing, which is a, actually a Marine Corps standard mm -hmm. product, uh, along with a uh, sensor sets and, and uh, a payload set such as this one, which, uh, Chuck, I don't know if you can see it there or not, <laughs> but uh, acting as a, uh, a strobe beacon to take care of a man overboard situation mm -hmm. on a submarine. And we'll be developing that theory in the next uh, couple of days here. but. Uh, that's what we have to get to here, and the PACOM s and conference is at the Hilton. It's at the Hilton next, and, uh, next week. And people are, the public's invited to come yes. in and join the... Uh, uh, especially on the exhibit side. The exhibit side, yeah. okay. So with that, we'll, uh, uh, we got ourselves uh, entertained here pretty well, and we, we're talking about entertainment. We're of talking course. about drones. We're talking about workforce development and work, not mm -hmm. just workforce development. We're talking about getting our expatriates like Chuck back. That's the main and, reason why. I mean, if we yeah. are developing people like Chuck, who has yeah. all the capability and the knowledge, it makes no sense for us to let them go all the way to D.C. and only be 40% of the way back to Hawaii, right? Okay. You know, we need to have him <laughs> back. Chuck, are you feeling guilty? <laughs> you ought to be. Uh, I'm feeling pretty guilty right now. All right, <laughs> please, thank you. <laughs> feeling guilty?